Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. It's an engaging and enlightening talk show on life, relationships, and the business of life. Grab a cup of juice and just chill. Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. Live life. Live fully. You are now tuned in to this week's episode of our podcast. Today, we are going to interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in our field. By sharing our collective expertise, we will show you how to harness, control, and use your own skill set to achieve ultimate success and live the life you want. And now, please welcome your host. to a really disruptive mindset conversations that is going to transform your life 360 degree. Now, Life All Lives by Mobile Steven is the show you like to listen to. We are expert and professionals who have the right information to take you further to the dream life that you've always wanted to have. It's given me great pleasure to have Alessia Roche, who is an international career acceleration coach, a speaker, and a trainer. Welcome with me on the show today, Alessia Rocha. Thank you, Amabila. It's a real joy to be with you. All right. We'll enjoy having you on the show once again, Alexa. Alexa, now uh, you are a career acceleration coach, and now this is what we'll be focusing on today's show. Um, going by what is happening in the society today, we have people who are uh, diving into entrepreneurship. Now, that's really perfectly fine because of the changes um, COVID-19 has brought to us. And then we have people on the other side who just want to pursue their professional career. Now, um, this is a conflicting priorities to some people, but indeed they are really what you know, venturing into. So uh, what would you like to say in this regard for those who really want to pursue their career and also have you know, a side also being an entrepreneur? How, what, what's, your, what's the take on this? Wherever you are in your career or in as an entrepreneur, you've got to stand out. We live in an exceptionally competitive world. And as a result, there's so many people who can do what we do. They've got the same skill set. And because of technology, of course, people, recruiters or companies or clients can source uh, products or people anywhere in the world. So you have to be able to stand out. And one of the ways you stand out is the way you communicate. And it's how you sell what you do, how you sell your ideas, how you persuade people that you are the ideal solution to their problems. And that sounds simple, but it's something that a lot of people struggle with. I think the most common issue I deal with with my clients is they struggle to sell their strengths. And that could be your strengths as an entrepreneur or as a professional in a corporation. Somehow we've been socialized to believe that if we are selling our strengths, we come across as arrogant and that's bad. And therefore we kind of tend to minimize our strengths and, and hope that other people will see it. I mean, myself, I grew up waiting to be discovered by someone and I'm still waiting. You know, you can't wait for other people to see your strengths. You have to be able to identify them yourself and then communicate them and the way I like to look at it, Amabila, is that if, if you can go into the mindset saying, I'm really good at X, and you could perceive that as being arrogant, but what if you changed your thinking and you said, I have this God-given talent. Uh, this is my superpower. People come to me because I'm very good at working with people, or I'm very good at spreadsheets, or I'm very good at strategic thinking. And that's a God-given gift. And that can help other people solve problems. So why wouldn't you want to share it? So it's a slightly different mindset, but it sometimes just helps people reframe their thinking around selling their strengths. And that's what you've got to do to stand out. Oh, um, Aleta, you keep emphasizing on selling your strength now. Um, as a liberty wants career, right? Um, for any of these reasons, I want us to talk about two important reasons, but reason number one, uh, is about um, those who struggle to sell their strength. What is the root cost of it? And how can they find their feet in all of this? Mm. The cost of not selling your strengths is that you get overlooked or you're the one who does all the hard work, but somebody else gets all the credit. So it can be intensely frustrating to know that you're adding so much value, but somehow you're not communicating it to other people. 
I made that mistake early on in my career, and I can remember having a performance review with my boss, and I was working my socks off, and I knew that what I was doing was good. And he said to me, compared to someone else at the same level, I'm not getting the same level of performance out of you. And I was so angry. And I really was, and he irritated me in the first place. So, you know, I was doubly angry that this irritating person had told me that I wasn't performing. But as I matured, I realized that what I was doing, because he irritated me, I avoided him. I wasn't communicating to him as the boss what he needed to know so that he could be assured that I'm doing my job and I'm doing it well. So by one of the techniques I teach my clients is to think from the higher level. Think from the next level you want to go to. If you were the person at that level, what would you need from your team? What would you be worried about? What would you need to be reassured about? And just starting to change your mindset to thinking at that higher level can help you develop the awareness you need of what is lacking and where you can improve. And then you can contrast what people at that level say and do and contrast it to what you say and do. And often what we do is we use tentative language. We'll say, it's just my two cents worth, or it's just my suggestion. I'm not sure about this, but maybe we could think about it. And someone at the higher level would be saying, I've done the research. I know the problem. This is the answer. It's the tentative versus the assertive. It's the, I'm, I'm not sure whether I know what I'm doing. And those are little things, but they help you build your authority and they help you build your influence and they help people build trust in you and that those authority influence and trust are kind of the prerequisites for getting promoted now we're talking about uh the two reasons now we talk about reason one talking about setting the strength the reason two is like if a person has the skill sets and experience but is still waiting to get either promoted now they are also very frustrated that leaders you know they're not noticing there uh what is your advice on this if you're not getting promoted i think you need to do a realistic assessment of what the barriers are and there are barriers you can control and there are barriers that you can't control sometimes a company just doesn't have the space for you or somebody's there and they're not leaving and, and that's beyond your control and in that case maybe you need to look elsewhere the elements that are within your control is how you do your job, how you communicate, and how you communicate your mindset to those around you. And I would really strongly consider people get a coach to help them. Because I know early on in my career, I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know that I wasn't communicating. I didn't know that I wasn't communicating the right things. But a coach or a mentor working with you could help you become aware of what you need to do and then work with you to develop those practices. So it's awareness is always the first step. As I say, awareness of the mindset of the people above you where you want to be and start thinking at that level. Helicopter out from your project and, and your team and look at things from a higher level and see what you can see differently. And often you can see quite a lot. You can see opportunities that you wouldn't see if you just focused on your area. So you've got to think higher and broader and then start developing the mindset of if I'm at, at that level, what would I say? What would I do? How would I say and do it? And start you know, developing that consciousness. And the other best bit of advice that someone gave me at one point when I was striving for a quite a big promotion, this person said to me, just say, I belong. And start imagining yourself at that level. Start seeing yourself as a person with that kind of potential and keep visualizing that next step with you in it, thriving, adding value, building teams, delivering results. And that to me was very, very powerful because that's a psychological mindset. But if you get, if you flip that switch, so many other things come into play and so many other things that are, they're not always tangible things. As I say, that's why you've got the skill set. You can do the job. But have you got the mindset to show up, to communicate, to believe, to be seen as, to, to communicate with the authority of that higher level? And that's what a coach can help you do. Oh, really? Um, Alita, is it possible uh, 
for someone or for a leader to be able to get the best out of their team and also be their influence. Because I know that team building, uh, it's really a challenging um, work to do in organizations. There are so many challenges that comes there because you need the cooperation of, you know, those who are on your plate. And uh, it's really yeah. been a struggle for some people. And then we're talking about accelerating one's career. Now, how can a person get the best out of their team, being a leader and also build their influence? That's so important. Um, that is probably one of the key strategies to get ahead. Um, if you are a leader who gets the job done, but it's an expensive overhead because everybody leaves because they can't work with you, that's not a good space to be in. So you want to be a leader that other people want to work with and that people want to follow. One of the most powerful leadership tools that in my opinion is validation. We are all human. And your team is probably constantly under pressure. Make it a habit to find reasons to validate the efforts. You can validate them for getting it right. You can validate them for trying hard, even if it didn't go perfectly. You can validate the person who's always the one who just shows up on time and gets the job done. You can validate the person who encourages the team when everybody's, you know, getting stressed. There's so many ways to validate people and you can do it face to face. You can do it um, by sending a voice note, which people won't expect, or a, a WhatsApp message or something similar to that. But the more, in my experience, the more you validate people, because very often we don't get validation. So if you are the one who validates them, it builds a bridge of connection, a bridge of understanding between you because they feel seen and, and valued, and therefore they will work even harder for you. So that's one of the key things. Listen to your team, ask them a, their opinion, but don't ask. And then the minute they start talking, you say, but I think this. Let everyone speak first and be fully present. Get their input and think about it and see what you can use and see, you know, you don't perhaps use everything. But just having them be heard is another very powerful con uh, communication tool that helps you stand out as a leader. We are in the business of getting results. We're in the business of creating products, selling things, whatever it is. But ultimately, we are in the people business. And if you can look after your people, your results will look after themselves. Absolutely. Right now, we're talking about organizations. Uh, very easy for them to just um, set up a vacancy, open a vacancy for uh, applicants, right? Um, Prospective for a job. But really, we still have the set of people finding the struggle, getting the right um, candidate um, to get a job. Are there ways that they can get on top of this? I think so. To me, we live in a very values-based society. So you've got to, and, and it sounds obvious to say it, but what are the, the values that are important to you as a company or important to you as a team? Can you define them? That you say, well, you know, we are a team that believes that we need people who are team players, and that's what we're looking for. You know, we can teach them skills, but we want the attitude and we want the personality that gels with our team. That's important to us. So you've got to define your criteria before the interview and therefore design your interview questions to elicit that kind of response. Because if you're just going to look at skill set, you're going to get someone who can do the job but doesn't necessarily fit into the team. So the first step is to understand what you're looking for, understand what works. And ask the people in your department, why? what makes us so great? And if someone had to come in, what qualities would we be looking for? And get that team input and then go out with that picture in mind and look for candidates who can fulfill those roles. Because, because the job market is so um, competitive, you could probably find 10 people who've got the skill set. That's not the problem. The problem is finding the right kind of culture fit for your team. And if you get that right, they will thrive. But if you bring someone in who can't work in a team or is difficult or wants to be the boss, that causes them all manner of other things that you're trying to hopefully not have to deal with. So I think a lot of the power of intention, the power of clarity in terms of what you're looking like will give you confidence going into that interview process that you can ask the right questions to get the right candidates. Right now, talking about candidates, Alita, what makes a candidate stand out? To me, it's 
preparation. I was the queen of winging it many years ago, and that helped me until one day it spectacularly didn't help me. But if I'm a recruiter and somebody comes in and they clearly haven't prepared, they um, haven't researched the company, they can't tell me why they want to work there, they're not articulate, it raises alarm bells because either it means they don't know how to prepare, and that's also concerning, or it makes me worry if they are this unprepared when they're trying to impress me before they've got the job, how can I possibly rely on them if I hire them? So preparation is 100% in your control. My best advice is to research the company, understand what they stand for, what they're known for, why you want to work there, what values of theirs resonate with you. And then look at the job description and find the key words. If they're looking for someone who is a good people person or a team player, or they're looking for specific skills, look at your resume and your experience and think of stories that you can tell that would prove that you got those abilities. Because I'm sad to say it, but they don't read your um, resume like a novel. They might glance at it. Sometimes software looks at it and picks out keywords. So your job in an interview is not, your biggest mistake is thinking that your resume will speak for itself, it won't. Your job is to make your resume come to life. And you do that by looking at the job description, looking at your experience, finding the stories, and then telling those stories to highlight those skills. You want to give them as many reasons to say yes to you because you tick all the boxes, you've got the skills, you've got the stories to prove you've got the skills. And then because you've done the prep, you are relaxed, you are confident, you are conversational. Those are the people that stand out as candidates. One of the questions that often are asked at the beginning of an interview is, tell me a little bit about yourself. And people often fall into the, uh, the trap of just reading their resume and thinking that that's going to work. It's not going to work. My suggestion is think about something you're passionate about and share that. And it can be totally unrelated to work, but it will be related to work. Let me just give you an example. We had a client once who was quite stiff and formal and, and didn't really come alive until he started sharing how he started training to cycle a leg of the Tour de France. And he came alive because he loved um, cycling. How he planned, the, what he had to go through, how difficult it was, how he overcome, overcame the challenges. And he came alive, which was brilliant to see. It helped him relax and help the people get a sense of his personality. But then the magic happened when he said, those same skills that I used to plan that incredible task I use in my workplace today. And that immediately became a value add to the interview because those skills of project planning, of tenacity, of overcoming challenges, that immediately they knew he would bring that to the job. So that's how you can use something that you're passionate about to help you relax, to make you come alive, and to be interesting and to relate it to the job. Thank you so much, Alita Roche, for your incredible insight on Accelerating One's career. Um, away from uh, candidates standing out from others, what stops people from being promoted at work? What, can you repeat that, sorry? What, what stops people, what stops people from being promoted at work? Uh, I think often it's self-belief and, you know, we kind of make up stories and we think, oh, I'll never get promoted because so-and-so is there or we, um, to say it's life's just unfair, they're not going to choose me, they're going to choose someone else. And we start believing this narrative that we are not the chosen one. Instead of saying, and, and, and it's almost like we operate from what is as we perceive it, but not from a position of what if, which is a place of possibility. So you've got to constantly feed your mind and your soul with positive things so that you believe in yourself and you can articulate the value you can add. I'll just give your listeners a website they can go to, which I found so useful. It's the high5test.com, H-I-G-H, then the number five, test.com. You do a free test there and they'll give you your top five strengths, but there are lots of personality tests. The value for me is not in the top five strengths, it's the language they use to describe how that strength is a value add to a team or a company or a project. And that I found so useful, be able to articulate your strengths. 
believe in yourself, believe in the future you. I know that almost everybody I speak to has got so much potential, but often we ourselves trip ourselves up with our mindset. Um, we've got the skill set, but we just don't believe or we don't know how to communicate our skills. So keep working on that because you deserve to get the job that you have worked so hard for and you know you'll add value. So keep stretching, keep growing, get a coach, work with a coach and, and just climb up that ladder until you get to where you want to be. Absolutely. Robert and uh, Alexa, uh, you have some uh, incredible projects in the pipeline you'd like to share with my audience. Now you can go ahead and share. Thank you. I believe in, in giving as much as I can. So I offer anybody who's interested uh, the opportunity to apply for what I call a free Accelerate Your Career Coaching Session, where I'll help you identify where you want to go, where you want to be and how it looks. We'll uncover hidden obstacles that might be holding you back. And I promise you that after that time with me, you'll leave re-energized, inspired, and just motivated to take that next step. So you know, the links will be in the show notes. And that is something I offer. And once I get to know you, and then I can establish whether what your needs are and what are the which of the programs I've got would be a best fit for you. And I've got a variety of them because my passion is to get people to that next level and make it as quick and easy for them to do that so that you can go and do whatever you are passionate about. And we need you. We need your voice. We need your expertise. So just go for it. Absolutely. Any parting words you'd like to share with my audience? Just believe in yourself. There's so much that's available to us. So find ways to celebrate who you are, to celebrate what you've already achieved and be good to yourself, be kind to yourself and then say, well, where can I go? What if I can go further? What if I can do more? And I know each one of us can. So go out and as I say, we need you. We need you to be your best self. So do whatever you need to do to get to that next level. Great. Thank you for the motivation, and Alita. Can you share your social media handles on your website? Yes, I will. Do you want me to say the website or do you want the show notes? The link? No, you can. Yes, no, you, you can. You can send the, um, your website. Just share with my audience and also your social media and those. Oh, things. OK. Thank you. Um, so the website is um, aletarochard.com and also interviewsurvivalguide.com. So those are that's where you can find me. Please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Aleta Rochard because that's where I share most of my material and my ideas and opportunities that you could take advantage of. All right, we'll go look for you uh, on LinkedIn, Alita. Thank you once again, Alita Rochelle, for your time on the show. Now, Alita Rocha is an international career acceleration coach, speaker, and trainer. It's been worthwhile.